using fundamental identities. We have learned all of the identities, but we're going to review them here so that we have them fresh in our minds for the work that we're going to do on the following slides. We have the reciprocal identities, which is the reciprocal of each of the six trigonometric functions. So for instance, sine of theta is equivalent or equal to one divided by cosecant of theta, whereas cosecant of theta is one divided by sine of theta. So they are reciprocals of one another. And the same goes for cosine and secant and tangent and cotangent. Then we have the quotient identities dealing with tangent and cotangent. So tangent is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, whereas cotangent is simply the reciprocal of that. Then we have the Pythagorean identities, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. We have one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta, and one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. I do wanna point out that any of the Pythagorean identities can be algebraically manipulated. For instance, if I had secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta, that would be equal to one simply by subtracting tangent squared theta from each side. And if I had tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta, then I could replace that with negative one. Next, we have the cofunction identities. Recall this means that if you have cofunctions, which are sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent, or secant and cosecant, if you're finding those values of complementary angles, then they're going to be equivalent. So for instance, complementary is adding to 90 or pi over two. So I could say that the sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to the cosine of 60 degrees because those are two complementary angles and sine and cosine are cofunctions. And the same goes for the others. And lastly, we have the even and odd identities. So we have even, if you'll recall, an even function means that it can be folded across the y-axis. So for instance, cosine, cosine would be even. So if I replace u with negative u, I get the same value. And the same goes for secant and for cotangent. We can see that all of those have replacing u with negative u and getting back to the original. That means we can fold that across the y-axis. The odd functions, so let me underline that. The odd functions, if I replace u with negative u, it's going to negate the function. It's going to be equal to the negated function. And again, what that means is when I have something like this, which is the sine curve, this function, or sorry, this quadrant can be rotated around and now it's in this quadrant because it is uh, symmetric with respect to the origin. Throughout this video, we're going to be using the fundamental identities in different ways. And I made this video a little bit longer than normal because I felt like this is a good place to have a lot of practice uh, because your skill level in this will determine your success later on. So make sure you take the time to really practice all of these questions. That's why I've um, added so many questions, practice questions to this video. We'll start with just evaluating a function. Now we know how to evaluate the six trigonometric functions, but this is different because we're given what tangent of x is equal to. We are not given what x is equal to. So they're telling me that tangent of x is equal to one third and cosine is less than zero. So I'll start by thinking about tangent. If tangent of x is sine of x divided by cosine of x, and tangent is positive, but cosine is negative, that tells me that sine must be negative and that we're in the third quadrant because both values are negative. Now we need to find all of the six trigonometric functions. The easiest one is to find cotangent because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm simply going to find cotangent by flipping over one third to get three. So that's the easiest one. Now we need to take a look at sine or cosine or secant or cosecant. 
So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity that says 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x because I know the value of tangent. So I'm replacing tangent with 1 third and then I'm squaring it. I'm adding that to 1 to get 10 ninths. But 10 ninths is equal to secant squared x and I just want secant of x. So I take the square root, which is radical 10 over 3. Keeping in mind that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosine, as we know, is negative. So that's why I've used the negative radical 10 over 3. And then, of course, the reciprocal of that would be negative 3 over radical 10. By rationalizing the denominator, I get cosine is equal to negative 3 radical 10 divided by 10. Now let's look at the last one. How am I going to determine sine and cosecant? Well, I know the value of tangent. Tangent x is sine divided by cosine, and 1 third is tangent, so I'm replacing tangent with 1 third. I'm replacing cosine with negative 3 radical 10 divided by radical 10. And then I'm simply solving that equation. So I would cross multiply to get 3 sine of x is equal to negative 3 radical 10 over radical 10, divide each side by 3, and I get negative radical 10 over 10. That's for sine of x. And then, of course, flip that over to find cosecant of x. And again, note that they're going to be negative because we determined that sine had to be negative. Now we have another question for you to try. I'm leaving my answer on the screen so you can kind of follow the same blueprint of steps. So press pause when you're ready, press play to see how you did. I'm going to go through the blue questions a bit faster. I'm going to do the same thing I did previously, which is determine what value sine or cosine or any of those are going to have. So secant x is less than zero and tangent x is less than zero. Therefore, sine of x has to be greater than zero and we're looking at values in quadrant four. So now I'm going to use the value of secant to flip it to find the value of cosine of x. I'm going to use the same Pythagorean identity that says 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x. Again, because I knew the value of secant. That gives me that tangent of x is negative radical 21 over 2. And the reciprocal is 2 radical, negative 2 radical 21 over 21, which is cotangent. And then I'm going to use the same step for tangent. Tangent of x is equal to sine over cosine. And I knew tangent and I knew cosine, so then I solve for both sine and cosecant. Quite often we're going to be asked to simplify a trigonometric expression. So most of the rest of these examples we will be simplifying. Sometimes we'll be adding and subtracting, then simplifying. But it's important to have this skill set um, as honed as it can be so that you can be successful throughout both trigonometry and calculus. We'll start just by looking at some strategies. So for instance, whenever you have something where you have a common factor, you're probably going to factor uh, to simplify and see what's left over. So here I've reduced, I'm sorry, I've taken tangent squared theta out of both one tangent squared theta and tangent squared theta sine squared theta. And that gives me something that looks a lot like a Pythagorean identity. Remember that sine squared theta plus so cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So I can replace 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. And that's just a Pythagorean identity. I can also think about the fact that tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. So using the quotient identity, I can replace tangent squared theta with sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta, and then simply simplify to find sine squared theta. Another strategy is that whenever you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, a squared minus b squared, that factors into a plus b, a minus b. So here, my denominator would, can, would factor into cosine x plus 2 cosine x minus 2. And we can see the advantage there is I have cosine x minus 2. 
that leaves me with 1 divided by cosine x plus 2. Now, if your answer was 1 divided by cosine of x, yes, of course, you would turn that into secant of x. But because we have that plus 2, this is our final answer. Uh, I would like you to try this question on your own. Keep in mind that same strategy is going to apply. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. So when you're ready, press play to see how you did. All right, taking a look at our question, the first thing I would do is factor into two perfect squares. So the square root of secant to the fourth x is secant squared x. The square root of tangent to the fourth x is tangent squared x. So notice I have a plus b, a minus b. Now the reason that we would want to do that is we can use a Pythagorean identity. We can replace secant squared x minus tangent squared x with 1, leaving us with a final answer of secant squared x plus tangent squared x, and that is our final solution. Let's take a look at adding and subtracting expressions. Again, we know to add or subtract expressions that are fractions that we need a common denominator. So for instance, for my first question, I can see that I have 1 plus cosine x and 1 minus cosine x by taking the first fraction times 1 minus cosine of x and the second, that's on top and on bottom, of course. Otherwise, it would be breaking so many mathematical laws. And here, 1 plus cosine of x on top and on bottom that's going to give me that common denominator that I need of 1 minus cosine squared x. So I have 1 minus cosine x and 1 plus cosine x. Those cosines cancel. That leaves me with 2 divided by 1 minus cosine squared x. And I can replace with a Pythagorean identity 1 minus cosine squared x with sine squared x. And because I don't want a denominator, I don't want a fraction, I'm going to replace 1 divided by sine squared x with cosecant squared x. So my final solution is 2 cosecant squared x. Take a look now at the second question. Try that one on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. My first step here would be to multiply by tangent and both the numerator and denominator so that I would have a common denominator. Then I would have tangent squared x minus secant squared x in my numerator, but I know that I can use a Pythagorean identity to replace that with 1. And 1 divided by tangent of x is cotangent of x, so my final solution is negative cotangent x. Let's try simplifying a fraction so that the final solution is no longer in fractional form. Now we've already practiced this a little bit with our other simplification questions, but we'll go ahead and move forward. Sine squared y over one minus cosine y. So what am I going to do first? Well, I know sine squared y can be rewritten as one minus cosine squared y. And now I've got a perfect square minus a perfect square. So I'm going to use that factoring, difference of squares factoring. That obviously helps me out by getting rid of the denominator. So my final answer is just 1 plus cosine of y. I would like you to try the second question on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So as you can see here, I already have a tangent x plus secant x. So hopefully in your mind you're thinking, hey, I know a special trigonometric Pythagorean identity that says tangent squared theta plus secant squared theta. So what if I multiplied by tangent of x minus secant of x on top and on bottom, of course. So if I multiply on top and on bottom, I'm going to get 5 times tangent x minus secant x. And then in the denominator, I have tangent x plus secant x, tangent x minus secant of x. Now, why did I choose minus instead of plus? Because when I multiply that, I get tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta, and that is a Pythagorean identity. And therefore, I can replace that with negative 1. And my final answer is essentially just putting the negative 5 in front and saying, well, instead of that, let's just put this as positive, tangent as negative, and secant as positive. So 5 secant x minus tangent x 
I would also accept negative 5 tangent of x minus secant of x. We're going to finish up with trigonometric substitution. And trigonometric substitution is something you'll use in calculus um, when you're dealing with some integrations that aren't working by themselves. So this is a skill, even though it seems kind of silly now, this is a skill you will use later on, which is why I wanted to make sure to include it in this video. So we'll begin with 9 minus x squared. And they want me to replace x with 3 cosine of theta. So that is why it's called trigonometric substitution, because we're replacing the x value with some trigonometric um, expression. So my first thing is replace x with 3 cosine theta. Squaring that gives me 9 cosine squared theta. I know that I have a 9 and a 9 again, so that's a common factor. I'm going to factor that out. That gives me 9 times 1 minus cosine squared theta. I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite cosine squared theta with sine squared theta. And now that everything is simplified, I can now take the square root. So I'm taking the square root of 9 and of sine squared x, which is 3 sine theta. For the second question, I'd like you to try it on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, they have given me the expression 9x squared plus 25 and the square root of that. I'm replacing 3x with 5 tangent x. I'm sorry, 5 tangent theta. So start by replacing x with 5 tangent theta. Then I square that. So I'm squaring both the 5 and the tangent. That gives me 25 tangent squared theta. Just like in our last example, we factor the 25. We replace tangent squared theta plus 1 with secant squared theta, and then we take the square root to get 5 secant theta. Coming up next, we're going to verify trigonometric identities. 